Now, since this is taking it to the next level, I want to explain some details about how I created that reverb. It's not a stock reverb, but once again, this reverb, as I mentioned before, enables me to use impulse responses for the initial attack of it, of the uh, reverb itself. It doesn't use impulse responses for the decay. It uses the algorithmic traditional style hardware type of decay. Uh, so it's a combination of the two technologies. And one of the advantages of this is that it uses up less CPU because it's only using very short impulse responses. And traditionally, the algorithmic style reverbs use less CPU and give you more control. You don't have as much control when you're working with an impulse response. So this is a good combination. Now, believe it or not, I'm using an impulse response that is a very small room. Surprise. Yeah, that's what we're talking about before. And all the way up to this is actually small rooms. It doesn't sound like a small room. But what gives that reverb the depth that it has, even though we're making everything very thin, is the fact that the initial attack in that impulse response is of a very small space, basically a vocal booth. And then all the addition of the decay is added through the software-based reverb. Now, had we used a long impulse response or an impulse response of a large space, it wouldn't give the same results. And this is where a small room Reverbs and impulse responses tend to get overlooked and aren't used for this very often. But uh, this is why we even created our own small spaces because uh, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful production tool when used correctly. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, do I have to go out and buy that now in order to achieve this? Well, of course you don't have to buy anything. But doesn't hurt. <laughs> for one thing, good tools are important. But they don't solve the problem and aren't the, you know, aren't, you could have the best tools in the world and still not get the best sound. Um, and there are unique ways to go about doing this. You could use two reverbs to do it. You could use one to create a very small space and chain it through another to create a larger space. But you wouldn't want to use a 100% mix if you did that. What you'd want to do is use the first reverb, create a tiny space, no decay, put it in the insert and maybe mix it only 30% in and then change it into another reverb, maybe use 50%, maybe 30%. You'll have to mess with it in order to create a blend between a small and a large space, which is what this is. No, those are thinking a little more deeply and these kind of ideas will enable you to think outside the box. Of course, we're chaining a number of effects together, essentially first the EQ, then this very complex usage of reverb, and then a phaser, which has been custom designed to create more depth and actually move those reverbs with the music. So this is all about, once again, getting you to think outside the box.